At this time, we welcome into the media center Brad Keselowski, driver of the number two Miller Lite Dodge. Brad, coming in to Pocono 21st in points and off a win. A uh, lot of talk about the, the wild card and, and what this means. Just talk a little bit about the win, what that means for the wild card and coming into Pocono. I don't know you. Who are you? Christy King. Oh, hi, Christy. Hello. Hi. This is how we meet people. But, uh, hey, thanks, thanks for making it out, Christy. Glad I'm to glad, be here. Glad you could be here. Um, well, not everybody makes it here. You know, there's a lot of people not here today. Where are we at? Pocono? I almost said Daytona. It's hard to keep up. Um, but as far as the wild card is concerned, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for a team like myself and uh, a driver like myself who's obviously not where we want to be in points but uh, has some performance capabilities. Um, you know, we haven't been able to consistently execute, but we've been able to run well, and uh, that's something I feel good about for our team. But, uh, you know, I said earlier in the season, way before I was – super competitive like I feel like we are now and way before I won a race that I felt like the wild card was great for the sport and serves the sport well and, uh, and obviously I feel that way still to this date and to this time but uh, you know I think it serves the sport well from the standpoint of guys that uh, are a bit riskier you know with their situations and uh, put things out on the line and although it didn't affect the way I ran the race um, this last weekend in Kansas you know if somebody else were to win a race and bump us out of that I'm sure if you looked at the last few races before the chase starts as being uh, very, very aggressive races uh, that, that teams would uh, do pretty much anything to try and get that win if they were in position to capitalize off of it. So I think that serves the sport well. I think that kind of builds into uh, you know almost that uh, playoff drama type feel that other sports have. And uh, you know, you know, for that, I'm, I'm kind of excited for the sport to, to have the uh, uh, the bracket or however you want to whatever you want to call it, uh, the procedure that they do. Okay, we'll open it up for questions here in the media center. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start back here with Chris, then go with Lee, and then Brian. Chris Johnson, NASCAR Illustrated. Um, having said all that, moving forward now, we're halfway to the chase, and you're seven points out of 20th. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's, are you going to go for broke for wins, or are you going to try and be mindful of that gap to 20th? How are you going to balance that? Well, I think um, it's too early to really have a strategy. I mean, there's still a lot of races left. And I think if you just look at the way our team's performing, we're, performing, uh, we're more than capable of being in the top 20 on our own merits. We're just running the way we've been running. So I think that uh, we just got to continue to execute. I feel like we're a team that uh, is growing stronger every week. If we can continue to grow as we've grown so far and at that same rate, you know, I feel like not only will we be a chase-capable team, but you know, perhaps could make some noise in it. So uh, I'm very excited about that, and uh, you know, I don't want to do anything to interrupt that process by, you know, doing something stupid to to try and get an extra win that might hurt that process. So you know, there's a balancing act there certainly, but uh, you know, as those last few races before the the chase come in, uh, you know, obviously you'll have a little bit a little better idea where you stand on that. So. You hate to kind of box yourself in and say, well, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. You know, I think more or less you, you, we have a little bit more time. And like I said, those last three to five races before the chase starts, I think are going to be really, really uh, exciting accordingly. Okay, we'll take Next question from Lee and then go back to Brian Nelson. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Given the fact that Kurt at one time said that he hadn't felt like he had a teammate, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Brian Newman comment. Um, did you show him last Sunday that you're a formidable opponent and, you know, maybe he should take his other teammates seriously now? Uh, well, I, I, it's a better question, I think, for Kurt than it is for me because I don't really know how he feels about it. Um, you know, I'd like to think that we're growing as a team. You know, I would be the first one to admit that last year and the way we performed was, you know, essentially a lost year. And, um, you know, I think if you look at that, you know, he had a lot of merits for what he said earlier in the season. So, you know, but that was last year, and now we're on this year. We're in 2011, and uh, you know, I feel like, in a sense, I picked off where, or I we're picking up where I left off at the end of '09, and uh, there's a lot of potential there to, you know, be that formidable teammate that uh, it, it takes to have a great multi-car team. Well, and, and, and adding to the work together. I mean, is there a cohesiveness there? Because in the past, that hasn't always been the case. Yeah, I think one of the the. You know, probably the less reported things at Penske Racing right now or, you know, the least noticed, however you want to call it, uh, is the synergies between the teams. And, uh, 
you know, I think you look before at the, the Newman and, and Rusty days, and I think that was well documented how that was not the case. And uh, I think that's something that we have right now at Penske Racing, which makes me very excited moving forward. I think that uh, Paul and Steve and Kurt and I work together very well and believe in each other. So I think that's important. Okay, Brian. Brad, Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network. I heard you mention with Carl on the way in, you kind of talked about how you'd be happy to trade a Kansas win for a Michigan win uh, from Carl. I assume that being kind of a home track for you, uh, very near and dear to your heart? Yeah, certainly Michigan's a, a very special place for me, uh, you know, not just because it's uh, uh, a track that I've won on in the past with a nationwide car, but, you know, obviously because it's my home track of sorts. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that Carl's won those races there and he'd give anything to win at Kansas and, I won at Kansas, and he'd give anything to, to win there. So, you know, I guess maybe we'll have to trade trophies one day. But uh, you know, it's uh, it's still cool to win a cup race anywhere you can win it. And I enjoyed to win at Kansas. But uh, to win at Michigan would be uh, right there with the Daytona 500, that's for sure. Any other questions for Brad? Okay, we'll take one from Reed and one from Mike. Uh, Reed Spencer with Sporting News. You practiced well today. Um, means you go out late tomorrow as far as qualifying mm -hmm. goes. Did you and Paul discuss beforehand where you wanted to be in qualifying, and and you know are you banking on cloud cover and possible rain, or did that enter in, into the equation at all? Yeah, I think pretty much everybody's banking on rain tomorrow. So um, you know we got all a bunch of engineers with all kinds of computers that show clouds and so forth, and they say rain tomorrow, and we got to believe them. So um, you know if if that wasn't the case, then probably would have gone with a different strategy. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Next question from Mike. Mike Muller, Mike Muller, dot net in. Five Hour Energy drink. Do you want one? Yeah. Okay. Are they your new sponsor, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm moving over from Red Bull. Um, <laughs> we, we know, have you and Kyle Bush made amends? Because I know that uh, Kyle Bush is rather hot right now, uh, a, a topic. And we talked to Carl Edwards about that, and he says he sort of made amends with him. Uh, Kyle's a volatile issue. He's a hard driver on the racetrack. Have you made amends with Edwards? It's still <laughs> sort of like, uh, yeah, okay. Well, I guess I don't know what making amends is. So, you know, I, there's making amends to me, and it might mean something different to ev everyone, but making amends to me is, you know, sitting down and talking to someone and writing a peace treaty, so to speak. And, and then there's, you know, putting things in the back of your mind and, and moving forward. And I would probably say that I fall in the latter category, whatever you would call that, as far as making amends or not. So, um, you know, to me, I'm put in the back and move forward and focused on what I can do to win next week and this week and make the chase and do all those things for my own team and kind of would find it a disservice to spend a lot of time thinking about Kyle. So, uh, you know, disservice to the people that work on my own cars and, you know, to our own efforts. So. You know, if that's making amends, then yes, but uh, it's probably not my definition of it. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Brad. Good luck this weekend. Right. Thank you, guys.